Hey guys, it's Mike from Indie Development, and um, we're going to answer a community question about how can we change uh, the color of text in a rich text box uh, when we're actually on a separate form. And um, it's going to be a pretty quick uh, tutorial here, so let's go ahead and make a new project. I'll just do Windows Forms. Form text tutorial. Uh, click OK. Uh, one thing that we're going to do is um, first thing we're going to do is let's just add a new class real quick. And this class is going to be used to uh, store information. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we'll just call it our color data. We'll use this in our data binding to the combo box I'm going to make. So inside here we need to make sure that this is a public class. And we're just going to put two things in here. Just a, a getter and a setter for two different parts. First one's going to be a string. It's going to be the name. What this is going to be is actually the name that they're going to see in the combo box when they uh, expand it to click on one. And then of course we also need uh, a color associated with it and call it value and I'm missing a reference make sure you're using system.drawing okay so now that we have this let's go ahead and save it and close out of that we won't need it anymore alright we have our form 1 here since we're going to need another form to work with, let's go ahead and right click Add Windows Form. Uh, form 2 looks good to me. Click Add there. Alright, so let's go back to Form 1. So we were asked how can we change um, to have a rich text box on this form and we want to change the color of the text in this box from this form here. So how can we do that? Let's go ahead and go over to Form 1. Uh, let's find us a rich text box. Okay, expand that out a little bit. Bring up the bottom for a button. Let's put a button down there. Alright. So let's go ahead and click on our rich text box. Let's come over here and let's see. We want to oops. Come down to the name. RTB underscore my text. Alright. And let's go over here to our button. Uh, text will be change color. And button name will be BTN underscore um, change color. That's good enough for me. Alright, so let's go here to Form 2. Let's design it real quick. All we're going to have here is a combo box. Put it about in the middle here. And we need a button. Alright, let's go down to our button here. Text will be close. And we want to and our button, btn underscore close form. It'll work. Click on our combo box and we are going to go down cbo underscore uh, change color. Be fine. You can name these whatever you want. Um, Alright, so now that we got that, let's go ahead and go back over to uh, form one and we're going to double click on the change button here so take us into our code alright so what are we going to have here in our form one what we're going to need first is we need uh, uh, an instance of form two so let's go ahead and put that in there so let's declare form two um, Form 2, we'll call it 
color form since that'll be the form that'll hold our colors where we can select to change our stuff now what we're going to need here since we're going to be working across forms we're going to actually just get a just like we did in the uh, color data class we have a public setter and a public getter uh, we're going to need a public setter for this so come over here we'll go ahead and put make a setter just do public it's going to be a color value and we'll just do a rich text box my text and then we're going to set the rtb underscore my text dot for color equal to the value that is passed now this allows us to keep our text box a private uh, text box so not everything can access it now only the things that we want to be able to access it will be able to get in here to it um, this is a good practice to use so now that we have that set up we'll be able to pass information to it and change that value so the next thing that we need to do is go ahead and uh, initialize our form here, our color form so we're going to do color form equals new form 2 and we're to be able to tie these forms together we're going to, have to be able to pass this to it so this is going to turn red for now but we'll do this we'll pass it this form here when we click it to open it and let's go ahead and come down here to the change color button and all we're going to do is color form dot show we don't have to make the form because we already we already have it here now we just have to show it so now it'll show all right let's go over to form two and we'll double click on the close button we'll get to that in a second uh, what we need to do in here is we'll need to um, first off we'll need to be able to get our color data so we can set it so we'll make a list of that and we're also going to need to um, hold an a instance of the form one so we'll do that Okay, so now that we got that. We don't need any getters or setters in here. I guess I should actually put you know form one there, so we know what it is. All right, so private form one editing form. Come down here. We're going to do a. It's going to take a a version of form one. Call it editing form. After everything initializes, we'll do this dot editing form equals editing form. Now you'll look if you put your mouse here. Where it says this editing form is actually going to come to this one. Some people may be confused by this. We put your mouse here and highlight that one. It's going to show that it's going to pass that one in. So this is going to take the parameter, and this one, since it's got this dot, will actually take the one up here. Okay. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to initialize our our list here and populate it. So and now we need to add some value so um, since our text is going to start off being black let's go ahead and make the black the initial one because this is the one that's going to automatically uh, be selected first uh, let's give it a value <coughs> and well, let's go ahead and put a few more in here do four. Make this uh, red. Make this one blue and uh, yellow. Red, blue, yellow. Now you may want to pass in RGB values or something like that. That's fine if you want to set up your color data to take that. So next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and get our combo box set up. So CBO underscore change color. Um, set it status source. So we're using data binding here. So so our data source is going to be the C data list that we made. And now we need to uh, set the display what we're going to see in the drop down box. So CBO underscore change color dot display member equals the name. And see we all, what we need now is to, what the value is. We don't want the value to be the name, so we'll do value member 
equals value. All right, and we will make sure that this is a read-only box. So combo, if I can spell style dot drop down list. All right. So that's pretty much all we got to do here. And now what we'll go down and uh, right here where it says button form uh, click, we're going to close it. We're not actually going to um, get rid of this form. We're just going to hide it because we'll probably have to use it multiple times, you know, if you wanted to. So now we can just hide it instead of making a new instance each time. We use the same one. Uh, now what we're going to do is uh, I'll show you one way we could do this through the code, but uh, some people may want to see how you could actually do it through the IDE here. So if we go up to Form 2 here, select our combo box. If you go over into this little lightning bolt, um, we're going to look for Selected Index Changed. Just double click in that box there. Now it's automatically attached this event handler to it in the, um, I'll go and show you here, in the Form2.Designer.cs. If we open this up, and by the way you can see here that the uh, all of our uh, declared variables are private. If you go inside this uh, generated code, come down and we'll find the change color. Now it has the event handler art automatically set up to it, so we didn't have to do anything. So I'll close that out and go back. Now, here's the thing. How are we going to be able to get the color? So it's going to be pretty easy. What we're going to do is just do the editing form that we set up. Dot, and then we're going to get the setter that we have over there equals since this is a color data object, go ahead and cast it into that. Change color dot selected item. Not index, but item dot value. So now we have all that set up. I know I went through this pretty fast, but uh, I think you guys once you actually see it. Uh, how we got it working, you know, it'll be pretty self-explanatory on what's going on. Um, so if we go ahead and run this, whoops. So now we got it run here. We can just type in some stuff. This is my text box. Let's hope this color changes. Hit change. Now other forms up here. All right, now you can see black since that's what it's automatically going to start out being. Uh, we'll do blue. We've changed that. We can close it out. Now when we hit change, it's automatically going to be set to blue, so we ain't got to worry about finding out what color this is and then automatically setting this to it since this is still actually uh, up and running. So do red, yellow, and black. Make sure it all works. Close that out. And uh, so that's how you can change color. Um, through another form I just wanted to show you one way you can do a combo box but I'm, you can do different ways you can do you know you could put another text field over here type in a value I know like um, the question was asked about it looked like he was passing in values from another text box so you could actually do like you know you, know, you had set up you could, uh, type in red to a text box and hit a button and uh, use that switch statement to find out what color it's put in and depending on what the text was you could change it to something that way you could also, you know, pass in RGB values instead of just color dot values. Um, you know, however you want to do it. But hopefully, this is what she's looking for. And uh, if not, let me know, and I can make another one. And I hope you guys found this uh, informative. Thanks.